This program is made possible by support from Mitsubishi Cement Corporation. Looks like we're in the jungle or an Amazon forest. We're not. We're in Southern California in Culver City at a place called Star Eco Station. Hi there, I'm Joel Green, the host of Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that takes what you're curious about and turns it into a safari. <laughs> we got a letter from Sarah in Mira Loma, California, and she wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, is there a homeless shelter for birds? Well, Sarah, what better way to go green to help protect Earth's inhabitants? So because of your letter, we've come to this place to find out not only how they can protect and shelter birds, but other exotic wild animals as well. You're gonna dig this. So let's get started on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green, but you must first make your way out of the secret tunnel. All right, so we're in the environmental village at Star Eco Station. I'm joined with Katiana. How are you? Good, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us out here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for it. coming. Well, to start us off, tell us what is Star Eco Station? Star Eco Station is an exotic wildlife rescue and environmental science museum. So we rescue animals that have been smuggled in illegally, abandoned, or abused. And then the animals help us teach the public on how we can save the environment and become environmental superheroes. You, you rescue birds. And other exotic animals. What other exotic animals are we talking about? We rescue about? reptiles, amphibians, mammals, pretty much run the gamut on rescuing all exotic animals. You know, it's funny because we always talk about going green and, and, and right here, we're, we're, this is where we see the impact, good and bad, right? Yeah. Good because you guys are here and bad because some of these animals need to be rescued. Also, we're stealing or we're taking the animals' homes to build our homes mm -hmm. and we're also doing a lot of logging or deforesting. That's why it's so important that we learn sustainable development and also recycling is such an important part. And so obviously these animals provide that educational tool for others that come and visit. They right? do. They're like animal ambassadors that go out and help <laughs> spark the interest or the curiosity with the kids. Hey, hey, that's what we're all about, right? Curiosity. <laughs> all right, so you're going to take us around and show, meet, introduce us to more of these birds, right? Absolutely. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. All parrots have two toes that point forward and two toes that point backwards. Beautiful bird. Now, what is her name? Her name is Blanca, and she's an umbrella crested cockatoo. Wow, yellow feathers under here. She does. Wow, is she, are she showing them off for us? She is. She's being a show off. What can I do? It's okay to pull? Yeah, it's okay. So how do you fly the birds? Um, actually, she's going in an enclosed room. Hi. <laughs> she's in camera time. Whoa! And we'll launch them to each other. And oh. then they just act as trees and they land on us. Uh -huh. And other times we'll run them down the hall. Oh, yeah? And then sometimes we'll just do this. So, so that gets the, uh, the workout. It's fine. Whoa! Hi, pretty girl. Chicka rock, chicka rock, chicka boom. Chicka rock, chicka rock, chicka boom. Chicka rock, chicka rock, chicka boom. Did you want to hold her? Um, Hi, sure. We'll just have to make sure you close. So okay. She fly. So she does fly. So if, if she starts to fly, let go. Don't go with it. No, go with just her. hold on tight. Don't let her fly. Okay. Hey, baby. Hi. Yeah, you see that? Hey, She's baby. She's in charge. Can I have a pet? Yeah. Wow. She actually loves the attention. Wow. As you were saying, they've been part of the whole 
why some of them end up homeless or because they don't get enough attention or you have to take them from? Absolutely, especially um, with parents, they're very social animals, so if they don't get the attention they need, they go a little crazy. Some of them will start self-mutilating, they become very loud, they can be heard for over two miles away with some species. What? <laughs> and they start screaming very early in the morning. What's she doing right here? She, right now she's preening or cleaning her feathers so she can fly better. So what does it mean when I preen? Preen, preening. Preen. Preen. To preen, preen or preening. Okay, to yeah. preen. What does it mean to preen? What does it mean when a bird is preening? Sitting down. Like her, it's her. They're flying up high and trying to um, get their food. All right, so now one other thing you were telling me is how do you know a male from a female bird here? In the cockatoos, you can tell because the males have black eyes and the females, like Blanca, have brown mm. eyes. Mm. <laughs> Such that? a flirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's flattering. I, I'm actually enjoying the attention, quite honestly. Wow, hi, baby. If someone wants to adopt an animal, can they adopt birds, any Ad of the animals here? Adoption first is always great. Um, some of the birds are up for adoption. Anything that people had as pets and could no longer take care of. Mm -hmm. Well, Blanca, she, she keeps calling me baby, so I, this is this an option for me? She's not. She actually came to us with, from Fish and Wildlife. Okay, okay, and you can't adopt? We don't adopt out any animals that the federal government or state has given to us. Oh, okay. More preening, more preening. All right, so we should move on and meet some of the other birds. Sorry, Blanca, we gotta go meet some of your friends. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know the largest of all parrots has an enormous wingspan of more than four feet? <laughs> all right, so that's all I get. All right, so Brees, I'm here with Brees, and she's gonna introduce us to... Iggy. Iggy. What, you laughing at us again. <laughs> this is Iggy, he's a blue and gold macaw. He was somebody's pet, and then usually what happens a lot of times with macaws, people get them without realizing what difficult pets they are to take care of. Mm -hmm. You can see Iggy here has a little bald spot. Yeah. Sometimes um, when parrots don't get enough attention, they get very stressed out, lonely, sad, and they'll start to actually pluck their own feathers out. That's what Iggy's done here. It's not funny, Blanco. That's pretty good. Do you have to move it? Do you do? You have to move it? Yeah, okay, like that. Oh, that's really, really loud. But Iggy's a blue and gold macaw. He comes from Central and South America. But he, this one particularly was actually born in the United States as a pet. He's probably about 20 years old, but he can live to be up to 100. Wow. So they can live longer than people. Wow. Now, he has a huge tail, too. Is that common? Yes, the macaws have very long tails. Or you can pet his tail. Is it okay? I don't yeah, want just don't grab it because he'll get mad. Just, okay. just pet it. Just pet it. Yeah, his tail helps him with a couple different things. Their tail is kind of like a steering wheel, so it helps them change direction while they're flying. And it also acts as a fulcrum, so it acts as kind of like a balance to help keep them keep them balanced when they're standing. Now, I noticed when he was uh, was preening himself, right? Yes. Or, a minute ago. Mm -hmm. he, he had, like, some missing feathers on his back, too, right? Yeah, he's got a couple of spots. Can you see under here? He's got a couple. Oh, wow. don't, don't, careful with your finger, because he'll... Okay. Yeah. I, I, hey, <laughs> we're good. Yeah, so he's got a couple of spots where he's plucked. Wow. It also could... Um, become something that they're missing in their diet. That could be another reason. But with our birds here, it's it's just become a bad habit for the ones that oh. always want more attention. That's amazing. You know, you know, I've been to pet stores and I see, I don't know that I see these exotic birds at pet stores, but the little, you know, smaller birds. And you know, they great pets, great pets. But again, some of these birds are really loud. And I would imagine that over time, it's difficult to deal with and then you lose interest in them and, and then here they are with you. Yes, that happens a lot. Um, these birds are very demanding. They're about as smart as two or three-year-old children, so it's kind of like taking care of a two or three-year-old that acts that like a two or three-year-old for up to a hundred years. I saw you earlier hold him. Like... Oh yeah, let's see if he, if he wants to, he if he feels like it. Oh, you gonna be gentle? Oh, 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 wow, and that doesn't hurt you, right? No, no, but he, he could him. break my finger at any time if he wanted to. <laughs> doesn't hurt him. That's real reassuring to know, by the way. Give me your best, loudest bird sound. Gaga, gaga. Caca! Caca! <laughs> you have any other bird sounds? No. Uh-huh. Try to work out some comedy with birds. It's... Uh -huh. good. I thank you. Uh -huh. All right. So who do we have here? This is Bird. His name is Bird. He's a Catalina macaw. Wait, wait. He's... Bird's name is... Bird. Bird. Yes, his name is Bird. That's original. That's I... a... 
<laughs> you were no commenting on how everyone here had such unique names. Yes. Um, <laughs> and he's actually a hybrid macaw, so that means he's a cross between two different types. The last bird I took out, Iggy, mm -hmm. he's a cross between a blue and gold like Iggy and a scarlet macaw. Okay. So when those two are bred, they look something like this. <laughs> He is beautiful. His, uh, he's got, um, don't watch out, he'll, he will, he'll, he'll, oh, okay, yeah, he'll okay. get you. Wow. He'll get you. Um, and he's got this bright yellow underneath his wings. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Look at that. So, normally you're not going to see hybrid macaws in the wild. It's, it's, it's more unusual. Mm -hmm. He was bred for a pet um, just to be, because he's such beautiful colors. He's also in his 20s and was also somebody's pet that they couldn't care for anymore. Wow, it, it's sad because we're, we're, we're hearing that that seems to be the story with most of these animals here. Right, so we definitely, if, if people do want to get exotic birds, exotic pets, we definitely recommend um, adopting them instead of buying a baby one that could possibly outlive you. Mm -hmm. There's lots of great rescues out there that you can adopt pretty much any kind of animal that, that you want, any mm -hmm. kind of pet. And uh, I was looking at your sign right here behind it, don't breed, don't buy, adopt. Appropriate here for what we're talking about, wow. So does he say anything? Oh, why you're holding like a baby. Yeah. You just warned me that he's going to take my finger off, well, but, he but you're holding him like a baby. Well, no, but this bird, is he's, he knows me, and he's, a lot of times macaws are very picky. Mm. Um, they're in the wild, they're monogamous, so a lot of times when people have them as pets, they tend to bond with one or two people. Yeah. So even though he's like that with me, he's, there's not really too many people that, that even mess with him at all. So from the birds, we're going to move on to some other animals, aren't we? Yes. All right, Let's cool. Go. Let's go out. This door, right? <laughs> What are different types of exotic animals? Lions, cheetahs, elephants, sharks, bears, deer, snakes, dogs. So we're talking about exotic animals. We've got a, a few here to demonstrate that they're holding. What are some other exotic animals? We um, also have reticulated pythons. Um, we have boas. In this room, this is our reptile room. So we have a lot of different, we have frilled lizards, chameleons, monitor lizards. Uh, is he hissing? Uh, yeah, that's the, the opposite of what the little one was doing. The uh -huh. little one was saying, come help me, mom. And this one's saying, watch out, I'm an alligator. Were these pets? These were pets, and they don't make good pets. <laughs> Unfortunately, when they're little, people think that they're really cute and sweet, mm -hmm. but they do grow, and they grow quickly. They get 10 to 15 feet. So these are not good animals. We can show to have his whole. Can I hold pets? this? Look at that. That feels weird. He's hissing. He's hissing. Joel, put him on the back. Okay. Okay. And why would we do that? This is, goes into what's called tonic immobility. Oh. And you'll see that he kind of goes to sleep. He's still got his hand up, and I hear him hissing still. There he goes. He, he's, oh, he's asleep. Nine, ten, out. Can I actually pat him <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, wow. Now, these little guys are being very docile here. Chandra, you said I can hold? Yeah. <laughs> How? I, I, I'm going to put your two fingers like this uh -huh. around his neck, and then the other one's supporting the rest of his body. Okay, his like body that. There. Oh, now, yeah. well, he's scratching there, and. and he's scratching you a little bit? Um, well, I think I've got his nails bent right there. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I don't want to make him too mad. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, I don't want to get him too close to him, right? Because are uh, they friends? No. No, the larger alligator will actually consume smaller alligators. Okay. So he's looking, thinking perhaps lunch maybe or no? Right now I think he just wants to not be held and he wants to get <laughs> away. But, but if they were probably in a wild situation or in the wild, they, this one might prey upon the smaller alligator, especially if they're not related. The mother takes care of the babies for up to two years. These were animals that you rescued, basically. They were going to be put down, so we said that we would definitely take them before that happened. Okay, how long will an alligator live for? Oof, a long time. I'm going to answer that. Over 50 years. Yeah. And they keep on growing throughout their whole lifespan. So the, <laughs> the older they are, the bigger they're going to be. Wow. Now, have you had it bite you yet? Uh, I, I'm pretty careful with Gremlin here. I have had small, small bites by alligators, but um, lucky to say I got all my fingers. I'm a little tense right now, not so much just for the alligators, but before we started this, you guys were talking about literally showing us some of the most exotic... Yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> we're going to try to take out a reticulated python. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so first of all, try to take... Why are we trying well, to take gonna, him? We're going to take him out. We're going to take him out. We're going to see, make like sure it. that he's in a good mood, though. 
We need to okay. always think about the animals first. So we're going to go in and make sure that he's okay. Okay. And because he's not in a good mood, we're not even going to mess. Right. And we're sending Our, Orion, Orion in, right? back Orion. in there. All right. So, Orion, you want to? I'm going to go ahead and put Gremlin away. So, bye-bye, guys. <laughs> Gremlin. He's hissing again. Right. And out goes Gremlin. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The largest boa constrictor ever found measured 18 feet. The time has come. I'm going to take out XO. XO is a reticulated python. Wait, wait, XO? XO, give big hugs and kisses. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and head in on XO here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm scared. I don't mind mentioning that at all, that I'm, he's like tapping the snake right now and grabbed his face. I can't think. Wow. Go get the bell. Wow, they're really uh, going in there right now. Oh. Oh man, um, which, okay, well, you want to put the, the, the head of, whoa. You don't want this in there. You don't oh, want this no. in there. Okay. How do you know? It, and I, it's okay that we interview this way, right? Where I'm yeah, way back here? Fine. <laughs> okay, because he doesn't know me. He, that's, this is true. She, she doesn't know she, you. My apologies. She. Actually, the females get larger than the males, and they have been known to get over 25 feet long. And, and how long is she right now? Uh, this one's about 16, 16 to 17 feet? feet long right now. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> what makes somebody think, oh, this is a great pet? I, I believe it's the novelty, and, and like Katiana was saying about the alligators, a lot of times when they, pets are very small, when the, the retic is very small, it's the prettiest snake. And so people buy it because it's the prettiest snake, and they don't realize it's going to be the biggest and the strongest snake also. Can I slide back there, maybe just like to hold a little tiny? Yes, you like may. I'm going to go the, hold the head, and you can go ahead and go right in front of me there, no problem. Yeah, okay. I don't think she saw me, and I'm just going to... Like, 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 I mean, like this part right here, right here. Yeah, like there, there oh, we there go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. I'm contributing now. Woo! Yeah, this is the longest species of snake, and they do grow very rapidly. What would be the biggest lesson for, for people at home? I mean, we're talking about, you know, being green and focusing on green in the, in the environment and eco. What's the biggest lesson that this snake can teach us? When people buy things, they should always find out how big it's going to grow before they buy it. Also, they should find out what kind of an animal species they are buying. Also, animal products, because people actually make pants and jackets out of these snakes. And so you also want to find out what kind of leather that you're buying whenever you buy a leather product also. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Boas are about two feet long when they're born and grow continually throughout their 25 to 30 year lifespan. We are in a cat cage, I guess, and I'm here with Jay. This is Jay, and he <laughs> is a bobcat lynx hybrid. So this is not a type of cat you would find out in the wild. This one used to be someone's pet, but that's not legal here in California. So he was brought to us instead. Uh huh. And now he lives here We're at the eco station. The same story with each one of these cats? They all have their own story, but yes, they were all kept illegally um, and in people's homes. So now, will you get cats and animals and reptiles from all over the U.S., all over the world, or is it primarily just from Southern California? The ones that are people's pets are normally just from our local area mm -hmm. in Southern California, but we would be open to taking in animals from other places if that was what necessary. Um, but we actually do try to find our animals other places to go, larger sanctuaries or zoos and other places that they, if they would have a better habitat than we can provide here. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. The bobcat is the most abundant wildcat in the U.S. What would be the message when, when kids come through here and, and schools come through here, what is the message that you try to make sure that they're aware of with, when it comes to cats? When it comes to the wildcats, first of all, that they do belong out in the wild, that we have them here only because there's nowhere else for them to be, mm -hmm. and that some of them are now declawed, so they couldn't ever live in a wild type situation. They wouldn't be able to hunt their own food or defend themselves. And so we just want people to know that even though when they're little kittens, they're very cute and cuddly, just like other house cats would be, sure. uh, when they grow up, they are wild animals and can at any time injure someone. Is there a true definition of an exotic animal? I mean, and what does exotic mean? Kind of like crazy. Cool. Excited. The true definition of an exotic animal is actually that 
uh, they're exotic means that they're from another place. They're uh -oh. not from this place. So the animals that we rescue, in majority of them, are not from America. They're from uh, Brazil, Africa, somewhere. They're from another area of the world. So last year, we had a contest to create sculptures and different projects out of recycled materials. And to make them this time was for the animals, to make something for the animals that we could use here in the eco station. Oh, cool. So some of the children from Gardner Street School, their project was actually to make a cat cave for Jay. And he really loves it. So they were our founder's choice winner. And he's awesome, still yeah. using it. So they, they put their pictures on there of them putting it together. Oh, that is so cool. It is still one of Jay's favorite hiding places. That is so cool. So it's made of reused? Yeah, and reused and recycled things that would have been going into the trash. Yeah. Instead, they put them together and made a fun little cave for Jay. Very cool. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know there are more species of fish than mammals, reptiles, and birds combined? All right, so how appropriate is it that the eco station has a lot of the things here that are recycled or reused, right? Yes, in the building of the eco station, we either use completely recycled materials or um, we took, we reused other materials. So in the reptile room, we raised the roof, uh -huh. and so we found air conditioning ducts and electrical conduit wires. So we said, what can we turn this into? And the set designers decided to make it into this cool exhibit of this tree. And so these are old air conditioning ducts and electrical conduit wires. So here we talk about reusing no kidding. and recycling. Wow. Now what about like all these leaves? You were saying that these were for like Hollywood movies They were or all used on sets. And uh -huh. so they were going to be thrown away. So they offered them to us. And we said, oh, yeah, absolutely. We can turn it into something else and then teach no about kidding. recycling. OK, now what would be like the message you're trying to, to get out there for kids? Um, about the environment. What's the biggest message you're the trying to The biggest message is uh, little things we do every day make a huge difference and it's in their hands and they need to take care of their planet because it's theirs. You are truly walking the talk. I mean, you guys are not just teaching people about animals and what to do and what not to do, but you're also a great example of, hey, if you've got something, reuse it for a purpose or recycle it. Absolutely, and I think if we all take this stance, then we're gonna make a huge difference. What kind of pets do you have? Two dogs. Two dogs. <laughs> I have two dogs. So let me get this straight, you have two dogs. Two dogs, you? one cat. Do oh, so you have, a, you have something and else. Two lizards. And, and two lizards. And two lizards. Dogs. How many? Three. Oh, you know their names? Yeah. Uh-huh. Shaggy, Tonka, and Mama's. Mamas? Yeah. Your dog's name is Mamas? Yeah, we can do our name. <laughs> we can call them that. Two dogs, one cat, and two lizards. Chandra, obviously we're talking about exotic animals and fish. I, it didn't even come to mind when you're talking exotic animals, but obviously you have to rescue fish also? We have to rescue fish all the time. These are fish from all over the world that people will bring to keep in their aquarium and a lot of them come from very far away places. Well, now these fish, I, I see these are pretty famous and, and popular, and I understand very expensive, right? They can be. The lionfish are a very beautiful species, so a lot of people will want to keep them in captivity. And they are very dangerous, though, because they do have venomous spines. Here, Over here, we do have some live coral that are also used in aquarium decoration. Birds, fish, reptiles, Tigers, lions, you name it. I mean, even coral. Even <laughs> coral. And, and we have a direct impact on, on every one of these animals here. We do, and w it's up to us. If we choose not to buy these animals, then people will stop bringing them in. Mm -hmm. And if we choose to buy only animals that are captive bred, then they won't have the demand and they won't need to bring in animals from other countries anymore. We we'll only scratch the surface here at, at your facility, which is phenomenal. I mean, every, every, place we go into, I'm like, wow, 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 we only have a half hour show, so we can't put it all in. But I mean, I, there's a model behind it, I mean, you, you, all these different things you have here for awareness, to teach people. You know, like yes. you said, just trash. I mean, trash go down the storm drain, end up in the ocean, and affecting the coral, and coral, the fish. Coral, the fish, that anything on. that lives in the water, and eventually even ourselves, when we have animals from the ocean that we eat, 
and they're impacted by pollution, yeah. it impacts us directly. So Absolutely. If we help the animals, we usually end up helping ourselves in the end as well. And the more we learn about preservation through education, the more we know about, the more we can do to help. Absolutely. Boom, chicka, rocka, chicka, rocka, chicka, boom. Hi. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> I want to thank everyone out here at EcoStation, especially you, Blanca, for showing us how awareness is going to affect the lives of these little creatures. And I especially want to thank you, Sarah, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, why haven't you let me know? I can't read your mind. Go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Isn't that right, Mark? Boom, chicka, rocket, chicka, rocket, chicka, boom. Boom, chicka, rocket, chicka. Hey, baby. No? All right. Well, remember, this is our planet. And it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious. Have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Okay, look, look. You and I, we had our time together. We, 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 we chatted. We danced. And remember the boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka? Remember? Boom, chicka, rocket, chicka, rocket, chicka. <laughs> boom, chicka, rocket, chicka, rocket, chicka, rocket, chicka, rocket, chicka, and there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're getting back to, you know, we're... What? 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 Blanca, come on. Let's, 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 let's work this out in a dance style. Hey. Hey.